has been a while, watchers. I have been thinking, what are the differences between mortals and immortals? Personally, I think a great difference, besides our obvious lifespans and whatnot. A, for, a more fundamental difference, if you will, is how we look at things, at life. Mortals would often say and think to themselves, what is the meaning of life? Do we know our own found world? Is our future our own? We immortals... Hmm... Such things aren't really on our mind now, are they? It's not just the finality, or rather lack thereof, in this case. It's the way we view things. An immortal will never get really tired of things that they find entertaining. We'll always enjoy the same food, countless times, eons upon eons. And we will chase after that particular taste that we found pleasant. Time and time again, going so far as even undoing time itself in our search. For to us, every morning sun, every sunrise, every sunset is beautiful in its own way. We don't grow accustomed to its beauty. Now I could talk about the philosophy of it, the idea of it, but I feel like you watchers deserve a different perspective. This is why you are here, is it not? <laughs> so, in the spirit of that, I have decided to give a fairly easy to understand example. Picture this. For you, you are just playing another game character, as many of you do. You selected the class. You started the game, you may have found a weapon that doesn't quite fit. You pay it no mind, you just move on, it's you go forward. For an item in a game like That's this not what's going on that. in my head though, when I see such a situation. No, no, no. What's going on? Well, <laughs> let's have a look, yes. shall we? The way I see things, our story begins with our character. A mage, one of many. However, he had a flaw, or some might say a talent unfit for a mage. He liked the weapons of the warriors, the soldiers, those on the front lines. The wand felt clumsy, the staff unwieldy. So he asked the masters of the academy for guidance. The grandmaster, the archmage, little use. His friends, similar. However, he did have one teacher that guided him towards a series of portraits and told him that if he were to unravel their mystery, he might, perhaps, find the keys to his own fate. And so the mage began his journey to a lot of worlds, a lot of portals. Some might even say a myriad of them. Whispers taunting him with every step. And though the world was full of light, life, meetings, and farewells, although he tried to gather companions for his lonely journey ahead. All looked to where the mage had come from with wonder, with yearning. So he took his goodbyes and went on his way, alone. Such a road, well, it was varied, difficult. It reminded him of why he wished to live. 
and yet he always felt alone, never quite at place. It was different. The void whispered his name. Even when in the world, even when in the middle of the battlefield, he felt the world gaze at him with eyes of stone unmoving. The very rotten decay calling out to him. The very fabric of reality twisting, turning, yearning. Yet still he pressed on, even though the signs were becoming ever more evident. From mountain pass to valleys, ever colder, ever watchful, ever watched. Perhaps he should have seen his fate in stone. Perhaps the fragmented glimpse of reality collapsing in on itself should have been a hint. But he was too far gone. He needed to know. He needed the answers. And he was close. Upon discovering a portal, his memories began to fragment, shift, ebb and flow, color drain from what he once knew. And he was drawn in. Things escalated. He didn't know how many portals he had passed. But at one point, the void became hungry. It hungered for him. And when he tried to escape, well... One small step could be his end. But it wasn't the jumps, the hops, no. It was the hesitation that brought him where he should have been. Of course, the seers did not lie. Those snakes slithering. Ah, apologies. I don't like people who spoil the fun of the future. <laughs> the seers. Those who have seen future past, or at least the possibilities of them. They did not lie in their dreaded paintings. The mage did find his future. He was to be one of the many possibilities, those who might hold the last epoch in their hands, and those who would ultimately decide its fate. But alas, such is the end of our little tale, a mere thought brought on by a mere coincidence, something unusual, something interesting. An entire tale, an entire world, sprung about by such a little thing as finding an item in a game. That is the sort of perspective we mortals have. Not of amusement, causality. Some might even say indifference to an extent. I prefer to call it imagination. Such is the origin of many stories, and many more to come. Good night, everyone.